we got one whole hour of Raynad updating us about the bazaar and all the recent changes. Fortunately, you don't need an entire hour because I'm going to summarize it all in a handful of minutes. So let's go. Cosmetics, toys, boards, animated cards, music, skins, and more are all supposedly earnable for a free to play account. This is because there is only one in game currency gems. If you want to buy gems for your money, you can, but you can also earn them from chests as you play through the game for free. This single currency thing is a huge bonus for players, and to me flags that this game is really trying to remove any predatory money grabbing methods that other games rely on as much as it possibly can. Now I also believe, and have experienced when games give you a small amount of currency for free, like the Bazaar intends to, how easy that makes it to spend a little money of your own, even if you didn't intend to, to be able to afford that cool skin. So, what this all really comes down to is how much free currency there is. If there is an absolutely minuscule amount and we basically have to pay anyway, then it's a payment model. If we get a considerable amount and we're only paying for extras, then, I mean, that's almost too good to be true. Cosmetics are also going to be limited, not in the FOMO spend all your money now kind of way though. No. Instead, this is being done to create a demand for skins on the bizarre cosmetic marketplace. Think Steam Marketplace, but just for the bazaar. And if you get in day one like me, maybe earn some cool board skins or hero skins or cards, and that a year or so down the line is worth 20 times what it was, maybe you can then sell that for gems through the game and buy thousands of other little, little items with your new gems for effectively free. I guess now is the time also for the elephant in the room, the supposed blockchain or NFT integration that has been rumoured all this time to be embedded into this marketplace. It exists, to an extent. This is actually the best of both worlds I imagine, at least as far as I can think of. Because trade is centralised on the Bazaar platform, through gems. You actually have to specifically go to the Bazaar website or some other platform and go through processes there to attach it to Polygon or ETH or whatever. I'm, I'm absolutely not an expert, so I'll stop here. But for us normies, other than people screaming on X or Twitter or whatever about the blockchain integration, it'll actually be pretty much invisible to us. Now, let's go on some actual gameplay stuff, shall we? Huge changes are coming to the UI and VFX. The board we got to see in our last video is due a massive overhaul graphically, let's say. Uh, although, go check out that video to see it in its early form, and while you pause that video and go check that out, you might as well subscribe too, it really helps smaller channels like us. We got one small tease of some VFX, which was particularly awesome. Uh, Raynad said that there are some huge effects for bigger items, such as the boulder that we got to see, which literally crunches across the enemy portrait. So long as these massive effects are somewhat limited, which Raynad confirmed in a later stream, this looks like a really awesome addition and will make it very clear when the huge impactful item has triggered. As we saw in the board reveal on the website, the hour slash encounter system has changed a fair bit already and continues to do so. The entire clock is going to be reworked or at least look a lot different from what we've now seen and each encounter is supposedly going to be far more immersive. I doubt that means we're switching to a first person game and walking into shops, but maybe their side of the board changes a lot more. Who knows? I can't possibly imagine how they are increasing the immersion of these encounters, but apparently they are. Another change coming to that area is our health. Not our hero health, but our health, our run health. No longer do we just have a few Mario style hearts, we will now have a total health much larger like we do in any other auto battler. With a bigger health pool, around 100 or so, early game losses won't be doing as much damage to you, so you won't be penalised as heavily for aiming for that late game build. Item packs were explained in much more detail, and actually aren't as set in stone as we thought. We were somewhat right in our last video, item packs are sets of cards for a hero which you pick before you load into a run. But instead of having a said number of base cards, let's say 70, and picking from a few packs to fill in the gaps, the team seems to see it as currently picking, let's say, 10 packs of 10 cards to form your entire possible drafting collection. Like a draft before the draft, almost. While this idea does sound really cool, at launch there will basically only be those 10 packs of 10 cards, so there's nothing really to draft. They said themselves they do need to refine this. Honestly, I would like to see these packs at launch or soon after, but I think it is a mechanic that can be reworked and patched as the game gets bigger. 
I really hope they don't stress on making it perfect for the entire game right now. I hope they just give us something that we can use early on to increase variance in builds, and then as the game develops and more packs and expansions are released, then they can change it into this drafting 10 packs of 10 cards thing. Experience is a new mechanic coming to the game. A lot like other auto battlers, instead of having to buy more board slots, they will now be granted to you gradually over the course of a game. Perhaps you can get them because the bazaar is much more expansive than other auto battlers. In other ways, maybe you gain more experience by fighting NPCs or take part in certain events, but typically this is now a passive increase to your board size, keeping things smaller early on and wide later. We'd seen from the new website update that shiny and fancy upgrades are pretty much gone, but they are actually still in the game, just not as prevalent. They are now called enchantments, which can be bought from a variety of vendors or found in other encounters. These will add a prefix or suffix style upgrade to your card, so your sniper rifle might become a cold sniper rifle, and will now freeze on hit on top of its usual effect. Reyna did also go into detail about how they have some awesome shader effects that they're applying to all their enchanted cards to make this visually obvious, but also retain the original art so you can clearly see what's happening, but we'll have to wait and see for that. Speaking of upgrading your items, which was confirmed, when you buy a second bronze dagger for example, you will upgrade your current bronze dagger to a silver dagger. The other mechanic most auto battlers have to enable you to prepare these upgrades and hoard duplicates and have other items on the side of your board is the bench. This was a very quick passing comment, but it does sound like there will be a bench style system, we're not sure if it's for duplicates or if it's for extra items while your board is still small. Ranked has always been a huge part of the Bazaar's framework. We saw way back in the day that there was only Ranked. It was the first mode we ever saw and we saw played. We heard a little more about how it will work. You will have one month Ranked cycles, which resets at the end of each one. But you will get a prized cosmetic for how far through the Ranked ladder you made it. Which, as per the cosmetic update we heard about, you will be able to sell for gems. So even if you are a hard stuck bronze scrub, you can always buy the pretty Grandmaster Max skin from me. Or, though probably not because I doubt I'll make GM, I don't take myself seriously enough for that. However, you will be able to buy it from some incredibly good player who is uh, looking to make some gems on the marketplace. There will also be an achievement system for people that like longer progression goals. The achievements will vary from easy ones that we can all get to some really difficult ones that take time and effort to complete. But potentially, these ones would reward you with cosmetics. Brainad does want to be careful about giving away free cosmetics this way though, as he understands bots could just rush for that achievement and flood the market with that one cosmetic. Finally, for those of you that missed the last opportunity to gain closed beta access, they have confirmed once again that there will be more ways of getting into it, so just keep an ear out for that. The surest way to be up to date on all of this, including when to get closed beta access, is to join our Discord server. I actually ended up missing the q and I was busy at the time, and the team there put together summaries, recordings, and were discussing it the whole time. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy, come join us. The link is in the description, and I'll see you there, or if not, in the next video.